In today's video, I'm gonna go over tips on how to eat at home all week, what I ate in a week, what I cooked in a week last week. I'll also include a grocery shop because my grocery shops are usually pretty much the same. If you're new here, my name is Jasmine. Consider subscribing to the channel if you want more homemaking, cooking hacks, cleaning hacks, all things housewife. Let's get into the tips. I'm gonna go through these pretty quickly. If you guys want another video on this, let me know, but I wanna keep this video as short as possible. Quick disclaimer before I start, I filmed my salmon dinner that's gonna be at the end of the what I ate in the week was from the following week from when I filmed, but I just forgot to film the salmon of that week, so I decided to film my grocery shop and the salmon from the following week. Just goes to show that <laughs> we do actually repeat a lot of our meals, which is one of my tips. We definitely repeat a lot of meals. I would say to include a new recipe, like really just whenever you feel like it. For me, sometimes it's once or twice a week or sometimes once or twice a month. It just depends on me really. Most of the time, I'm just focusing on my basic meals that I know I like. So let's get into the tips. I'm gonna read them from my computer so that we keep this as fast as possible. First is to make a list and a menu. So make a menu of the meals you wanna cook and then make your grocery list from that and then post your menu on your refrigerator. So you know what you're gonna cook every single day of the week. You can obviously switch it around depending on what you're craving, but make a menu, it makes it way more enjoyable. You know what you're like looking forward to, you know, there, it takes all the thinking out of it, which I think is the most stressful midweek when you're busy running around. At least you don't have to think about what you're gonna make, you already know. Next tip, keep it simple most of the days, all of the days. It depends on my mood, like I was saying, sometimes I'll you know make a really complicated meal or a new recipe, but most of the time, it's very simple. The next tip is to come up with a system, which I can make a whole other video on, like decluttering your, ki your kitchen, cleaning out your refrigerator on a regular basis, putting away dishes, cleaning as you go, coming up with a system to keep your kitchen running uh, well will also be motivating so that it's not like a big mess at the end of the day because no one likes to do that. Next tip is to repeat a meal, especially if you're cooking every single day of the week. I do my grocery shop based off six to seven days, but I, I will repeat one or two, two meals, like right now. Behind me, I'm making barbacoa again. We're gonna eat that tonight and tomorrow night. This week, we also had meatballs and spaghetti. We had that Wednesday and we had it Thursday. So it's easy to eat at home if you plan ahead like that. And next tip is to make bulk items. When you make rice, make a lot of rice so you can have it two, three days following days. So if you make roasted potatoes, roast a lot of potatoes, vegetables, anything that you can make bulk like that, I'm not a big fan of making a lot of food that's gonna you're gonna planning on eating for three days like a whole meal because that gets boring no one really likes to do that but i can make rice and then make a whole different meal the next day and still use rice but it's not like i'm eating the same exact meal which kind of contradicts like repeating a meal but i mean it, i don't know if the meal's good enough you can repeat it you don't want to repeat like it for a third day which leads me to my next tip which is invest in good tupperware you don't have to do it right away, but slowly start buying better Tupperware, glass Tupperware where you can see what food's in there and it like just, in my opinion, looks more appealing in glass than having it in a plastic container. Especially if you can't see what's inside, you're gonna forget what's inside. Make sure you can see what is in your Tupperwares. Next tip, which might be the most important actually, is to make food you like. My rule of thumb, my motto is if I make it at home, it's healthy. <laughs> because I think a lot of people think correlate, and I could be wrong, let me know, but correlate cooking at home with cooking healthy food. But if you think cooking healthy food is like you're gonna boil chicken and steam broccoli and that's gonna be your dinner every night, like that sounds boring. I wouldn't wanna eat at home either. But if you're like, no, I'm gonna make some really delicious fish, steak, chicken, something really, really good, it's more motivating to want to eat at home. I don't know, <laughs> to me, like, if I make it, it's healthy. If I make cookies from scratch, they're healthier than eating a bunch of cookies that have a bunch of preservatives in them. I also want to mention mistakes are normal and you're going to get better at cooking. So there's many times I've messed up a whole meal. Oh well, <laughs> it's fine, I keep going. You learn from it and also you get a lot faster at cooking, which I'll talk about in just a second. So I want to mention you're going to make mistakes with grocery shopping. There's been times when I grocery shop, I buy way too much food and some of it goes to waste. Sometimes I bought not enough food and I have to go to the grocery store, but after trial and error for just a couple weeks, I know exactly what to buy and my refrigerator is perfectly empty at the end of the week before my next grocery shop, 
which also helps me keep it clean. Slowly start doing these things. It's going to build up over time and you'll be able to eat at home if you're desiring to start cooking at home more, you know, to save money or to eat healthier or whatever. Building these skills up really makes a difference because it's easy to go grocery shopping again and like my whole refrigerator is empty. It's super easy to clean it out and again, keep everything organized. Keeps me organized for the following week again and again. So when you like add a new member, like we just had grandma move in. So there might be a couple weeks coming up where I might buy too much food or might buy not enough food to start to recalculate like another person eating as well. So if you have kids or you just had a baby or something like that, making those adjustments are like to be expected <laughs> is what I'm saying. And finally, my last tip is to commit to it. If you really want to do it, if you want to start eating at home for health reasons, lowering your cholesterol, watching your blood sugar, sodium levels, health, weight loss, fitness goals, you want to gain muscle, you want to just save money <laughs> or you want to have more family time, it's a great way to bond with your, your partner if you cook together or with your kids, then I just say, it's like you have to just decide and commit to it and that's gonna get you going and like expect mistakes. Don't expect perfection. I don't ever expect, I expect myself to mess up and when I don't mess up, I am pleasantly surprised <laughs> and that's my attitude. And for me, if you're like me, I just recently got married, we don't have kids. It's just me and my husband and now with grandma, I'm taking this as like my training time <laughs> for whatever. This is how I view it if you're like me, if you're, around this age, you just got married, you're just cooking for two. This is how I see this time. If you want kids like I also do, I see this as my training time. <laughs> like I'm learning how to cook good meals, healthy meals, <clears throat> and I want to learn them, memorize them, so I can do them quickly. So that when my house is full of little toddlers running around everywhere, I know that I can confidently cook a meal quickly <laughs> and it's gonna be healthy or healthier than taking the whole family out. It's gonna be way cheaper than taking the whole family out and i'll be able to do it quickly and efficiently because i've i'm practicing these systems right now and that's why you guys will see me in the video i'm like practicing making pumpkin bread and you guys see me throughout just the channel i try new recipes all the time because i'm trying to get them down quickly which really my mom is my biggest inspiration because my whole childhood i she would just make anything a meal like a huge meal in like 30 minutes like anything <laughs> and it's just because she practiced so much now she can do it so quickly like i can call her and be like mom i'm on my way to your house can you please make me this and she's got it ready when i get there like i want to be like that so um, it takes time it takes practice so if you're in a similar situation to me if it's not motivating enough for you to like want to eat home for health reasons or saving money you're like nope i still like to eat out or but you like kind of want to eat at home maybe like reframe it as like a training ground it's your training time for whatever you're like a super busy mom you've got this skill set down. And if you already are a super busy mom, I still have faith in you. You totally can learn how to do this. You can totally learn how to make quick meals. Obviously my what in week, you'll see I make some pretty extravagant <laughs> meals. You can definitely fine tune it to make it easier. Um, and I'm sure in the future, whenever I do have kids, I will come up with video ideas and tips and tricks for that and that time. But anyway, let's get into the what I eat in the week. You guys will see Monday through Friday, the grocery haul, and then you'll see Saturday when I make the salmon, but that's from the, the previous week, so. Starting off with lunch for Monday, I have turkey cheese on sourdough with pepperoncinis. I literally have this five to six times a week. I keep it simple for lunch. For dinner, we had french fries that I put in the oven with a steak. And these french fries, I cut them with um mandolin cutter whatever this thing is called i show it later in this video and i didn't use enough oil so my french fries actually ended up sticking pretty badly and i thought it was going to be ruined but it actually came out really crispy and really yummy Here I'm just pan frying a ribeye with salt, pepper, and garlic. That's how I garnish it every single time or season it. I let it sit out for as long as possible, three to four hours. That really is the key to cooking a good steak, especially if you're pan searing it. And I cook mine depending <clears throat> on the thickness and the size. I'll cook it anywhere between four and a half minutes to five to six minutes sometimes. And you cook it on a really high heat and it gets that nice thick crust on there, so good. A 
I like to serve our steak always on this wooden platter. Obviously, it's just me and my husband, so cooking for two of us is a little easier and I'll probably have to change up my plan a little bit once I have children but for now this works perfectly what was that fry doing <laughs> and another tip I have before cooking at home is to keep the kitchen clean here I'm just cleaning off the stove I try to do this every single night it really adds up and helps it clean keep helps it stay clean For Tuesdays, I decided to show my breakfast, which honestly changes every single day, but on this day I was having, again, sourdough with cheese and some fried egg. Just This was like a more fancy breakfast for me. Usually I just have oatmeal. I keep it pretty simple for myself. On this day, I was prepping chicken fajitas and I made fresh tortillas. I just like to make tortillas. With this, you could just buy store-bought tortillas if you want to save time if you're a little busier because the crock pot meal is pretty convenient because I am making the chicken fajitas in the crock pot. But if you have time or if you just want to try it, you can make <clears throat> homemade tortillas. I can leave a link in the description for the recipe that I follow. I will say that when I first started doing this, it took me way longer, but now it's super fast for me and I do it all pretty quickly even though the process itself takes a while because you do have to let the dough sit for about 30 to 40 minutes but if I time that time period <clears throat> that waiting time period pretty well it goes by pretty quickly also my dough this time was really sticky for some reason it's I've made this several times and it's never been this sticky I, I think I might have just used too much water or my water was too hot but I decided to leave it in to show you guys that I definitely struggle and sometimes it's inconvenient to be making fresh tortillas, but I kept with it, just added more flour slowly and it actually ended up working out well. I think these were the best tortillas I made, or maybe it was the second batch I made this week, I can't remember. how bad it was sticking it was really bad but they were delicious finally got it to come together you want to let that sit for 10 minutes and then after it sits for 10 minutes you want to separate it into individual balls for the tortillas and then those ones you let sit for 30 to 40 minutes here I started making some salsa I was roasting some tomatoes on the stove no, oh, no, just kidding. I wasn't making salsa. I was roasting the tomatoes for the chicken fajita sauce. I make salsa later in this video. And for the chicken fajitas, I was chopping up a bunch of veggies. This is one of my tips, making a bulk meal. I planned for this meal to be repeat meal in the week or just to have for lunches throughout the week because it has a lot of vegetables. It gets really bulky. It's really filling. So that's one of my tips is to, you can make a meal like this and totally just repeat it for dinner the next day. I think I actually did that because I included in this video a different meal that I ended up cooking the week following. So I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure we ate this two nights in a row. Here I'm rolling up my tortilla balls. My tomatoes were roasted here, so I'm adding them into the blender. With chicken bouillon, or this is like better than bouillon. Love this stuff. And then I had this fajita packet. Instead of seasoning just to make it easy, you could also just use all your own seasonings. This was just on sale that week, so I just grabbed one to keep it simple. Adding some lime juice. Cumin. 
onion, water, and I'm pretty sure I added some onion or some garlic. I don't know if I saw that in the video. Then you just add your chicken breast to your crock pot, add the sauce, and then you let it cook it's on slow. I did slow for eight hours. And even at that setting, it was ready in about six. Add another tip, clean as you go. Just rinse out your blender. It really just makes it such a difference when you clean as you go. Here I started rolling out and cooking all of my tortillas, which is also nice because they usually last us for a week or a few days depending on the meals we're eating. Here I'm showing you the chicken fajitas when they're all done. The chicken was just falling apart so easily. served it with some cut up cabbage, cilantro, and limes, but you can just serve it up however you want or you can make them into quesadillas. Then you just want to shred up all your chicken. This is our dinner for the evening. Okay, Wednesday I got in a little bit of a mood. <laughs> I was cooking a lot. I made fresh salsa, which you're seeing me roast the tomatoes here with the serrano peppers. Just rest them up and then throw it into the blender with onion, cilantro, lime, cumin, salt, pepper, garlic. And what I like to do is cook my salsa afterwards. I feel like it gets that tomato taste out of there and then after it simmers for a little bit I put it into the refrigerator and serve it cold. make my salsa a little different every single time so you can just play around with it have fun figure out what you like to eat I wasn't a fan of this salsa too much but Gunner did like it I knew I was forgetting something. The cilantro. I'm gonna scoop some up. And then, okay, now you can stop. Oh, crisis averted. Okay, this was later in that same day. I was making french fries again because Gunnar really liked the french fries. And I'm showing you guys how we use that little cutter thing. And I just season them with the steak seasoning and salt. And do a little bit of avocado oil. I 
think I roasted them at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is what I mean that I got just <laughs> a little wild. I got a little cooking bug in me today, on that day anyway, and I decided I wanted to make pumpkin bread. I've never made pumpkin bread, it was already late in the day, but I just really wanted to do it. I felt motivated, so I made pumpkin bread with cream cheese swirl. It actually was pretty good. Oh, here I was dividing my ground beef. I was freezing some of it because I didn't need all of it and I just put salt and pepper into the bowl and start to work it into the ground beef, make my patties. I was trying to keep it kind of simple <laughs> since I was cooking so much today and I put the patties and the bacon all in the air fryer at once to fry up. That's the first time I tried doing that. I usually just cook the bacon in there but it worked out really good so I think I'm going to continue to do that. Here I was messing with my cream cheese frosting or icing because it wasn't coming out how I wanted it to, but it ended up working out. Here I was trying to make my swirl. It actually didn't work out well, but it was kind of more of like a blob in the middle of my loaf. But I will try again soon and see if I can make it better. And then I just saw this weird little slice thing on a reel, so I wanted to try it. And then I just tested up some brioche buns, took out the fries from the oven. and put in my pumpkin loaf into the oven to start baking. It actually wasn't ready in time, so we had to wait till the next day to try it, but it was really good. And that went in for 45 minutes. There's the burgers with the bacon. I was surprised by this. We always like to do barbecue sauce. The Kinder's barbecue is our favorite. I just put the bacon at the bottom and then the patties and a slice of cheese, and that's usually our burger night. Oh, we like to do grilled jalapenos too, but I didn't have any today. Pumpkin loaf out of the oven, and I took it out of the little thing to start cooling for the night. This was at five in the morning when Gunnar was going to work and I was a little bummed about my loaf. It just looked like I had cream cheese on the top, but I actually did swirl a little bit throughout. So it was good. I would have liked it to be more swirls. <laughs> that day I was making pizza. I totally made my pizza dough, didn't even film it. Um, I just followed a basic pizza dough recipe. They're all about the same. You want to just mix it up. I do it in my KitchenAid and then I let it sit for an hour. This one I actually let sit for a while because I was going to the gym, but it still worked out well. Just rolling out the pizza dough. I'm just trying to like get comfortable making different types of doughs. That's why I was wanting to make the pizza dough, but for this recipe I did just use store-bought pizza sauce and pepperonis. Gunner opening my jar. What a gem.
of just avocado oil or olive oil. I don't know. You can just use whatever you want there. Probably even better. And then I just was getting creative. One of them I did fresh mozzarella with pepperoni. The one next to it was just sauce and cheddar cheese. And then I had a little bit of extra dough, so I just kind of put some sauce and I think pepperonis on it. And these were really, really yummy. Friday was slightly another bigger cooking day. I was making barbacoa, but when I make this on Fridays and then we have it for dinner and we also have it for dinner on Saturday because Saturday we go grocery shopping and I don't want to cook dinner after grocery shopping. So I've been liking to make a repeat meal on Friday so the next day we can have it as well. And I honestly have been playing around with the barbacoa recipe, trying to figure out what I like, but I can link the one I follow down below. I'll link all the recipes I follow down below. So you just blend up your sauce and then put your chuck roast into the crock pot and then you just salt pepper that and throw your sauce into it. So after you learn how to make the sauce, this recipe is actually pretty quick and easy to make and it's super delicious. Here I was making some beans, fresh beans. I cooked them from dry beans, so you just wanna wash and separate your beans, add water. I put onion, cumin, chicken bouillon, and green chilies in this one. I forgot to put cumin in my barbacoa. <laughs> And then after they boil for about three to four hours, they look like this, and then I just mash them up. Here I was making some rice. Oh yeah, but I forgot, how to, I totally thought I was filming when I was making it, but I didn't. So you just saute the rice a little bit to fry it up, and then you add a water, a can of tomato sauce, chicken bouillon, maybe some garlic powder and black pepper. And then you just let that cook normally like you would any rice and you have Mexican rice. Here are my tortillas. I don't think I showed me making the dough this time because I had already showed it in the video, but I just did the same thing. And this was the meal after it was all done. Okay, this is a grocery haul, not from the week of meals that you guys saw. I forgot to film a haul that time, but we basically get the same thing every time. So here, we got broccoli, two bundles of cilantro, Roma tomatoes, I'm gonna make salsa again, peppers, for dinner, sweet lunch, jalapenos, potatoes, we got salmon, a ribeye, bacon, two pounds, three pounds of ground beef, unsalted butter for to make tortillas again, onions, spaghetti, our snack cookies, coffee. We get this every other week because it goes on sale, so we just get two bags to last us. Uh, almond milk, we're gonna make barbacoa again. I'm trying to perfect my recipe, and Gunnar really likes it. So we got this cooked roast. Um, pepper turkey and cheddar cheese. Always for lunches, we get that every single week. And then sausage, chicken, 
eggs. I usually get the cheaper eggs, but they were all out, so I got the fancier eggs. I have Mountain Valley. I love this water. One day, well, one day I'll have my own filtered water. But if I had to, <laughs> I would prefer to like water delivered to my house all the time. It would be Mountain Valley. And brioche buns and sourdough. Oh, over here we got some tomato sauces stocked up. So make a lot, I add that to a lot of things. Some chipotle peppers again for the barbacoa. Cans of corn. I put canned beans in. <gasps> We forgot to get beans. What? Yeah. How could we? I don't know. But I put black beans in Gunner's chili, canned beans, and then I make the right beans, dried beans, you guys saw. I don't know why. My camera's not working. More corn. Cinnamon apple spice tea. We got this last time and we love it, so it was on sale. We got two. And that was it. Over here we got some fizzy water from Costco. These are old, old milks. They're getting tossed. And here we got... I rearranged the refrigerator a bit. Put fizzy water up here. And then I'm going to put everything away. Throw the meat goes. Since I forgot to show you the salmon I made last week, I decided to film it from the following week. Like I was telling you guys, I just made some white rice, super simple, sauteed some broccoli and garlic. I mean, in butter with garlic powder, salt, and pepper. That's how I make it every time. The trick is to use a lot of butter. This time I put the salmon in the oven because I got a whole filet. I usually just put it in the air fryer, but it came out super good in the oven. And the cleanup was super easy, having it wrapped up in the aluminum foil like that. And then the broccoli was done. I actually put the salmon in for just a little longer after this, but not much longer, and then served it with rice. I made extra rice. So we'll have that again for the next day, making a little bit of a bulk item. And this was super delicious, so yummy. This is my favorite <laughs> uh, sparkling water right now, the Spindrift one. Please someone sponsor me for fizzy waters. <laughs> Alrighty guys, that was the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching the video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. I'll have some recommended videos around here. Let me know what you thought of this video, if you found it helpful, inspirational, or anything. You maybe learned something or got inspired to try a new recipe. Please let me know, and I'll see you guys in a future video. Bye.